Hi, this is Dr. Corey Glenn, and I'm going to do a quick demonstration of how you would plan a case for a routine tooth borne stent uh, using the Blue Sky Plan for replacing just a single lower premolar. This would be number 28 in this case. So I've opened up the DICOM file, and the first thing I usually like to do when I'm doing a lower tooth is go ahead and map the nerve. Now, as you can see right here, I can make out the nerve um, in this slice. And the way you can do that is if you'll come up here and use your panoramic curve tool, you can move these around until you can clearly see that cortical uh, boundary of the nerve canal. And so once I do that, I can see the nerve canal completely uh, throughout its length. So what we'll do is come up here and add nerve. And then you just start clicking away. And we'll just do points all the way down the extent of the nerve up to the mental foramen. And you'll notice up here in this top left window that we're now at the foramen, so we can click one outside of that, and that should map our entire nerve. As you can see, we're exiting nicely out of the mental foramen. We can scroll back and forth through this and confirm that we are in the nerve canal. So that looks very accurate. If you needed to, these little white dots that come up, you could adjust the positioning of that, but I'm very happy with the nerve position. So at this point, we would in, uh, import the STL model. So we'll come up to File, Import STL Model, go to wherever you've got the patient's STL model saved, and as you can see, it pulls this model in and drops it down here in the lower left-hand screen. Now once it imports that model, it'll bring up this stitching window. We'll maximize this window. And now we need to start picking common points on these teeth to stitch the CAD CAM data to the STL model. So what I like to do is zoom in as far as I can on the teeth so that they're very distinct. Get them in the same orientation. And now we're just going to start picking common points. So if you hold down the shift key, it'll turn that into a crosshairs. We can put a dot there and a dot here. We can move back, put a dot here, dot here. And we can proceed around the arch doing uh, usually seven to ten points in this manner. And I do try to pick uh, these very carefully because your, your entire case depends on the quality of this stitch. If you don't get this part right, there's no use in going any further because everything's going to be off. And it's usually good to get some on the buccal surfaces, some on the lingual. So that's eight points. Let's go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice that it drops this into the lower left hand menu. When you look at this, you should see a modeled appearance of these models showing through one another. So you can see a little purple burning through the white there. And if you've done a good stitch, you should notice that all the way around the arch. So it appears good there. There's two other windows that you always need to go to to verify the accuracy of your stitch. If you come to this view, 
we can scroll up and down and what I'm looking for is to make sure that this purple line is approximating the teeth very very accurately which it appears to be as you'll notice when I scroll through the teeth are disappearing at the same time as that purple line so I'm happy with that the other one you would go to is this cross-sectional window we would scroll through here and as you notice this line is, is going nicely along the edges of the teeth so it looks like a good stitch that we can go ahead and proceed with at this point we don't really have any need of the 3d rendering to be on so we can turn that on off and the next step would be to go ahead and stick a prosthetic tooth in there now you can choose to do this if you like um, you could also um, import a CAD CAM designed restoration if you so wanted to but these little widgets allow you to just stick a tooth in and it just kind of gives you a rough idea of where the tooth position is going to be This one can widen it. This one makes it taller or shorter. And again, for a tooth borne case like this, we don't really have to have this. You pretty much know where the emergence of the tooth is going to be. But just to demonstrate the functionality, I'm showing this. So we've got a tooth in position. Um, it's always wise to go back and lock your nerve position once you've done it. And you can also come up here to the tooth panel and you can lock that tooth position too. That way if you're moving around you're not going to accidentally grab this and knock it off. So let's go ahead and plant an implant. If I click into the side of the implant here we can do plus implant. I'm going to place a uh, Blue Sky Bio Biomax implant. We'll start out with a 4.3 by 10 and we'll just see how much room we've got here. Drop it in any of the views you can use the little ring to spin it. You'll notice this little exclamation came, point came up. That's telling me that I'm too close to the nerve as you see down here. And as we move that on up, we don't have that problem anymore. And you'll kind of do the dance of looking at this in all dimensions and trying to place it uh, according to the best surgical and prosthetic position. I find the most useful window to do this in the upper right hand side. This window when you scroll through it is going to spin the implant on its axis and that way we can see it in all dimensions as far as how much bone we have everywhere. And so I'm trying to adjust the emergence to get it to come straight through the uh, occlusal surface of where that tooth will end up being. I want to make sure that we're within the confines of bone everywhere. Ideally about a millimeter and a half of bone on all sides of the implant. Which it looks like we can easily accomplish here. So as I spin this around its axis, you can see that we're completely encased in bone. Now let's evaluate our prosthetic emergence looks pretty good there if you want to you can always come up here right click it say add an abutment and sometimes I'll choose a custom abutment and I'll just put a, a long length like 20 millimeters on this and that can make this a useful view for visualizing how the emergence will be out of the tissue and through the prosthetic so I'm happy with that placement that looks good if you wanted to, you could possibly come a little bit to the buckle with this. I think I like that just a little bit better. And again, look at it in all dimensions. You can appreciate here how close we'll be to the nerve, which is not too close. I feel very comfortable with that. So I'm happy with the implant position. At this point I would lock that implant position as well. We can turn off the abutment. We can also turn off the tooth. 
And now it's time to make a guide. Now when you're going to make the guide, you do need to turn on the guide ring. That's this little icon right here. And once I've done that, I do notice that there's a little bit of an issue. As you'll notice right here, the ring is actually eating into the teeth themselves. Right here, we've kind of got a narrow spot and we're placing a fairly wide implant. So this could potentially be an issue. Now, I notice that it, the teeth don't stick all the way into the inside. Um, when you're doing this, this ring right here is actually what will be incorporated into the final 3D printed guide. So as long as there's nothing sticking through here, we'll still be able to put the, the metal guide tube in. And the way I approach this is that I'll just come back once the guide has been 3D printed. I've got that stone model and I'll just take a, a burr to the inside of it right here until it fully seats. Uh, that's not going to affect the fit of the guide or anything like that. Um, you just need to kind of take away a little bit of that 3D printed material until the guide will seat. So come to your guide panel. We're going to choose high on our guide quality. We're going to choose the arch that we're working on and then we're going to choose draw curve. So when you hit draw curve, hold down your shift key and you'll notice that the arrow turns into a crosshair and we're going to just draw the perimeter of our guide. I usually like to go from the most distal tooth uh, up to a little past the midline. And you don't have to be very precise with this at this point. Because now we'll hit edit curve. It's going to bring up all these little dots which you can adjust and you can fine tune the perimeter of your guide. I do like to take this all the way to uh, the bottom of the teeth because the software is going to block out undercuts you don't have to worry about that so I like to get all that uh, axial tooth surface to really stabilize the guide so we're just moving around adjusting this getting it at about the gingival level And that looks pretty good. Now I like to flap when I do my guides and so I don't want this uh, to be way down here because if you do that there's no way that you can retract a flap out from under this. So right in the area of where I'm going to be I make it a little bit shallower. And I do still make sure that I can look straight down from the top and not be impinging on that. Get that line smoothed up. So everything looks good here. We'll push create guide. And here's what we come up with when we have our, our guide designed. So very simple. If you wanted to, you could come in here and put in the patient's initials. I can type here. And you can position this as big or as small as you want. And then once you hit apply text, it's going to emboss this into the guide. So if you've got a lot of cases going um, and you're try having trouble keeping track of all the guides, you can at least have the patient's name in that. Now let's go back to surfaces. We can turn off this model. Now again, remember the what I told you about the guide tube needing to be adjusted. Now let's actually come up here into the implant list and turn this off. And so you can see you'll have a slight bit of adjusting to do right there and right there, but the guide tube it's, or the uh, guide itself is still going to be perfectly intact on the interior here where you can slide your metal guide tube in. Okay, so this is looking good. It's time to export this. We'll go to export data. We're going to just choose the surgical guide to export. We're not going to export any of the nerves. We're not going to export the implants or the teeth. The only thing we want to export is the guide. And we'll hit export a file name. Hit save. And so at this point you're done. Uh, you could run a drill report that's got your recipe, but um, again, if you look at your parts list in the panels, 
we're going to be using the 43 dri short drill and with the way this guide is designed you'll bottom that drill out on the, the uh, X cube handpiece it's a single drill and you're done you're going to use a 4.3 by 10 implant you can see the guide tube that needs to be ordered and so we've got everything we need here and uh, you just need to have this 3D printed and you should be set for your case so very simple very straightforward workflow uh, and well worth the effort to, to go through it to have a, a good safe surgery that you can be confident of